has a real prosperity. Can anybody say amen to that? Those that are preaching against prosperity, you got two groups of them. One preaches against it and says you're a sinner if you got any money. The other says you're a sinner if you don't have any money. They're mad at both groups, and both of them just want money. After they get to the end of their sermon, whether they're preaching for it or against it, they're actually after your money. That's it. And when you, the sooner you realize that, the sooner you're going to be delivered from them. It's a sin. It's a shame. I don't know why any preacher in this country needs a 22-room mansion on the Gulf of, uh, of uh, California. I don't know why anybody needs five Mercedes-Benz automobiles. I don't know why anybody needs a jet airplane that flies, flies faster than the president can. But that's what they've done with the money. Shame on them. They'll get their, they're getting their reward now, and uh, they'll be surprised when the judgment comes because, of course, they think they're right. But I want to ask you one question here today. If prosperity is a sin, and if it's a sin for us to be blessed financially, hold that in mind. If it is a sin, if it's wrong for you to prosper, I want to ask you why does the Bible say Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. If it's a sin for you to be blessed financially and have money enough to do what God has called you to do, I want to ask you why the Bible says uh, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If it's a sin for you to be wealthy in this natural life here on this earth, why does the Bible say blessed shall be the fruit of thy body? the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. If it's a sin for you to be prosperous and have more than just enough to scratch by, why does the Bible say, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store? Why does the Bible say, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out? If it's a sin for you to have money, why does the Bible say the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee? If it's a sin, if it's wrong, really wrong, for you to be wealthy above all your friends and all your neighbors who don't believe in God, why does it say the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee, and God shall bless you in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground. If it's wrong for you to be blessed with money, more than enough, more than just get by money, amen, more than uh, uh, five dollars to spit in the, the gas tank. Come on, say, if, God, if it's not God's will to bless you, then why does it say in the Bible, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. How, did you hear that? This is not talking about a country lending to another country. It's talking about you lending to nations. What about that? And not borrowing from them. Proverbs 3.10 said, Thy barn shall be filled with plenty and thy precious shall burst out with new wine. Some of you ain't even got the old wine yet. Come on, say amen. I, you need the new wine. You need the new blessing of God. Why does the Bible tell you if it's not God's will for you to prosper and have money and have wealth and live in a nice home and have your bills paid, not just on time, but paid off, why does the Bible say he, God will open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it and God will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and God will not let anyone destroy the work of your hands, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your vine and uh, the Lord shall bless the fruit of thy field. The Lord of hosts shall do this. Why does the Bible teach this? Why did God say this to his people? Why are the promises of God, all of them, are yea and amen to all that believe? Uh, th I'm giving you direct quotations from the word of God. Listen to this. All these blessings shall overtake thee. 
they they'll come upon you if you believe these and begin claiming them and you can't get away from God's blessing why because God said it and because it is God's promise and it is for you to believe it and you to receive it Isaiah 61 6 you shall eat the riches of the heathen of the Gentiles this is talking to you here today somebody got mad, got mad when I said well I don't care if these people come in from foreign countries and raise all the money that they can and and they get all the money and get it all together my Bible tells me that they're going to get it all together but they're not going to enjoy it can anybody say amen to that I don't care if they come in here and they uh, 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 the Gentiles the heathen come into this country and raise all the money while we're sitting around watching TV I don't care because you know why God says I'm going to enjoy what they have worked for God will make you plenteous in goods and he said I will make give you my good treasure this is speaking of wealth and money that God has promised to his people then thou shalt lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Job 22, 24, and 25. Thou, this thou that's in these scriptures means you. Thus saith the Lord of God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. I know they're trying to get you to store up food. They're trying to get you to scare the hell out of all of God's people, thinking of all the bad that's going to come. But every time I read the Bible, it's telling me how God's going to bless me right in the midst of our enemies. And everybody that tries to hold me down, God's going to prosper me. You don't have to say amen. All you'll wind up doing is saying, oh me. <laughs> you can either say oh, amen or oh me. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. If I've ever signed a Bible for anybody, you read that scripture, if you read it, because I wrote Joshua 1.8 in, in your Bible, if I gave you my autograph. Huh? My Bible tells me i got a sign here somewhere. It says, It is he that giveth thee power and the ability to get wealth. And give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and God will cause men to give it to you. My Bible teaches me that God brought them forth out of bondage with silver and with gold, and there was not one sick one among all of their tribes, or not one feeble one among all of their tribes. God said, how does this happen? How the Word of God says that Christ, though he was rich yet for your sakes became poor that you because of his poverty might be made rich moreover I want to ask you if riches and wealth is a sin then why did God say that it's a gift from God read Ecclesiastes 5 19 every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth and given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor this is the gift of God in other words the word of God declares here Solomon the richest man who ever lived on the face of the earth with God's knowledge except Jesus Christ uh, uh, the richest man and also the smartest man he said uh, money is a gift that comes from God in other words if you're God's children God is going to give you riches and wealth and give you the power to enjoy it I wish somebody would say amen if it's a sin to have it and it is a gift from God then God giving you this supernatural gift is making you to sin well that's what some preachers want you to believe but I'm going to tell you right now God's not going to give you anything that's going to hurt you everything that God gives you is going to help you money can save you can anybody say amen I said money can save you money can get you out of trouble money what can money buy money can buy food for your table money can buy a car for you to get around money can buy a house for you to live in money can do this for you money can buy a better doctor <laughs> come on say amen money if you had money what would you do if I had money somebody wrote a song and said I'd go out and buy a Ford truck or two but not me child of God if I had money if God gives me more money the more mon money God gives me the more I'm going to preach the gospel 
Hallelujah. God's not going to give me money to sin. I know God has made a way and given some people money to sin on a message that they did not write. You say, where did this modern teaching on prosperity come from? I can take you to the day. I can show you the tent lot down on South Cicero Street in Chicago when I had my little sermon book. And I walked under A.A. A. Allen's tent and I had my little necktie on. I can, we, my mother couldn't afford to, uh, and my kids' shoes. <laughs> but I had a shirt and a necktie and I had uh, my little uh, used cardboard briefcase and inside it I had my school notebook that it was my sermon book. And A.A. A. Allen came over and sat down beside me and he said, look like you're a preacher, son. I was only 12 years old. Uh, you look like you're a preacher. And I said, I am. God's called me to preach. He said, what you got in that briefcase? I said, I got my Bible and my sermon book. He said, let me see the sermon book. One of the sermons that he opened up and read there was Deuteronomy 8.18. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. He said, where do you preach that at? And I said, they won't let me preach it anywhere, Brother Allen. <laughs> they won't let me preach it. He said, well, let me write that down. And he sat there in his Bible, in the front of his Bible, I got it up here somewhere, where he wrote down my sermon notes. He started preaching the message of prosperity. He started preaching that God wants you to be rich. Everybody was given $5 in his offering in those days, and he'd pass out envelopes for $5 to be mailed to him in Dallas, Texas. Do you know since that time when he started preaching the message of prosperity, people started giving him tens of thousands of dollars. When he started preaching the message of prosperity that God wants you to trade in that old rusted out uh, car that you're driving as held together with a bumper sticker. Come on, say amen. The rust, uh, it's held, the rust is held together with a bumper sticker you put on there that says Jesus saves, hallelujah. God blessed them and moved them out of that dump they were living in on the other side of the tracks where they were living with Brother Rat and Sister Roach and all of a sudden God began to bless his people with prosperity. Can anybody say amen? amen? God, how it influenced a lot of people. Dr. Martin Luther King sat beside me in Atlanta, Georgia, listening to the message of prosperity that A.A. A. Allen preached. He believed that nothing from nothing leaves nothing. That was A.A. A. Allen's line. That's what he preached. He preached you got to serve God. Money can actually save you. Now, there's some things that we need to realize here is that we have had this message. Some of them have used it in politics, but I'm going to tell you, even Gandhi said the two biggest enemies of of God's people and I, I don't know if he was talking about Christians or not the two biggest enemies of God's people is poverty and a lack of education huh? Jesus said the same thing the truth you know is going to set you free you need to be set free here from today from all of these lies told by the media and told by politicians that you can't make it unless you're listed and, and signed up on all of these government programs. Can I tell you, God will make you a government unto yourself. You need to move into the kingdom of God. You need to get more than what God has planned for the rest of this world. God will bless the work of your hands, riches and wealth, and the power to enjoy them, according to Scripture, is the gift of God. I cannot believe that God would give you something that would send your soul to hell. God promised to bless you with prosperity. Stop listening and reject every voice that tells you you're going to be poor and you're going to be doing without and you need a man to help you do anything. God is the man. Hallelujah. God is the one. God is your source. It is better to put your trust in God than to put your confidence in man. Somebody shout amen. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variable. He doesn't change and there's no shadow of turning. James 1, 17. Now if there was not another by a word in Scripture other than Ecclesiastes 5, 19 that tells me that prosperity and riches and wealth is a gift of God, I'm going to tell you, I'm seeking now. I've already got the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeking now this gift of riches and wealth. I want a hotel. 
Hallelujah. I want a restaurant that feeds people for free. I want a hotel that people can come there and stay when they're in trouble and not have to pay about anything and worry about anything. I want a hospital that treats anybody at any time, day or night, 24 hours a day, not just with prayer. If they need a shot, I want to give them a shot. I want to get a Holy Ghost-filled doctor. Listen, I got plans for money. All I'm waiting for now is money. Somebody said, what's your plan? I want to save the world. That's my plan. Somebody shout amen. What is the gift of God? The word of God says it's riches and wealth and the power to eat thereof and to rejoice in your labor. What are you talking about here? Some of us need to get rich with the money that God has laid up for us. And I'm not worried if somebody else makes money. If they're a sinner, listen to me. Look at me. I'm not worried if somebody makes money and they're a sinner because they'll put it up, but the just are going to eat it. They can save it up as much as they want to, but they'll never leave here with it. They're going to have to turn it over to one of God's people. This is the word of God. The gift of God is riches and wealth and the power to eat thereof and the power to rejoice in your labor. Moreover, God said uh, in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish that you're, you prosper in three areas of your life. Listen to this. God wants you to prosper... That means financially. Financially. Prosper means with money. Prosper means also in your health. God wants you to prosper in your health. Some of you walking around sick, you don't have to be. If Jesus didn't want to heal you, why did he do it? If he didn't want to make you rich, why did he do it? He paid the price already. God wants to bless you with physical health in your body. And he wants you to... What good's, what good's health if you ain't got no money to spend? What good's money if you don't have the health to enjoy it? God wants to do both of those for you. He wants to give you the money and he wants to give you good health to enjoy it. Not only that, it says as your soul prospers. God wants you to have spirituality too. You said, well, you can't be rich and have money and still be spiritual. I'm going to tell you God's best friend in the Bible was a millionaire. Hallelujah. God's best friend was the richest man in all of the East, and his name was Job. You said, but Job had trouble. Yeah, but he came through it all right. Hallelujah. What are you going to do? You having trouble and giving up and quitting and saying, well, I guess it ain't for me. You know, that's what's trained in us in this country. Well, you tried your best and it didn't work. I'm telling you right now, stop trying your best. Let's get God's best. Hallelujah. God doesn't give up. The Holy Ghost doesn't go to sleep. It doesn't quit when the sun goes down. It doesn't get tired. The Holy Ghost doesn't get tired. It's still working. Send the Holy Ghost to do what you can't do. Let the Holy Ghost prosper you. Let the, it's a gift of God. Now, God, give me the power to do what you've called me to do. God promises you a prosperous soul if you obey him and do what he wants. God wants you to have equal parts of wealth and health and salvation. God doesn't want to hold back any part of that. God wants you to be healthy in your body because what good is money if you don't have good health? Can anybody say amen to that? Huh? God wants you to have a spiritual basis in your heart. What good is having money and health if you're not saved? Can anybody say amen? You got to be saved. You get saved first. Well, I'm putting it in the right order here. You get saved first. Everybody say saved first. Get a healthy body second. And then you got to, after you get saved and you're healthy, then you need some money to go where he sends you and do what he tells you to do and have what God promises you. Does the devil have a gift? Well, yes, he does. The devil has a gift. Some of you have been eating the devil's wealth. Huh? The devil's wealth is poverty. The devil wants you to be poor. The devil wants you to do without. He wants you to be sick in your body and infirm. He wants to rob your health. Satan wants you to be poor continually, scraping the bottom of the mill barrel. But God wants to come down and put meal in your barrel. God wants to bless the working work of your hands. And every, does the devil want you to live righteous? No. The devil has a gift. It's called backsliding. He wants you to sin. 
He'll put little sins in your life. They'll creep up on you. He'll, he'll get the announcer on TV to say you're a bigot if you don't uh, live right and if you're not holy. If you reject sin, then the world is going to be mad at you. How they'll march in the street and tear pages out of your Bible and wipe themselves with it. They'll do it on Main Street because they, because they hate you. You know why the world, why the devil hates you? Demon-possessed people are going to hate you. They're going to hate you because when they look at you, you don't need them to get by. You can do it with God on your side. You can do it with God's blessing in your life. Hallelujah. You can live above. That's why they hate you. It's because you live without the sin that is crept into their bodies and into their minds and controlling their actions. You can live without that. You can live above sin. You can live a holy life with God. You can do what God has called you to do. This is why God is going to give you good health. God is going to give you spiritual blessing. God is going to give you anointing. God is going to give you more money than you can spend on yourself. God is going to give you a house so big that you can't live in it by yourself. You're going to have to bring people in. Hallelujah. And neighbors are going to come. Hallelujah. You're going to have so much food on your table, you can feed everybody on your block. You're going to have so much money in the bank. Hallelujah. You're going to live so good that Aunt Hattie, you didn't even know who she was, but she's going to show up on your doorstep and say, I'm your third cousin once removed. Hallelujah. And want to move in with you hallelujah and you're not going to care because you're going to have so much money it's not going to matter to you you're going to have money to spend money to do good money to bless you money to bless your family money to bless your children man money to bless your grandchildren this blessing is to you and to your children and to your grandchildren a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children God will bless you. Does the devil have a gift? Of course he does. The devil still wants you living in a rat-infested tenement house somewhere. The devil still wants you living in the worst part of town. The devil still wants you living uh, from hand to mouth, waiting for the next check to come along, or waiting for uh, somebody that you did good for years ago to come by and remember you. That's what the devil wants you to live on. He wants you to depend on other people. He wants you to put all your hope in others. He wants you to put your hope in somebody's goodness. And I've got to let everybody look at me right now. The world ain't no good. Has anybody found that out yet? People in this world, even the atheists who said they're morally superior to everybody, they ain't no good. You examine their lives. Listen, I, I, I've known some influential people. I, today is the birthday of a, a, a young man that I knew from Kansas City. His dad was a Pentecostal preacher. He, became, uh, he played with the Beatles. He played music with uh, uh, Elton John. He played music with almost everybody you can think of. And you know how, how he's dying right now? He's dying from drug abuse, and he can't control his hands that he used to play the piano with. You know what? Dev the devil has a plan for you you he has a gift for you he has something he wants you to do he wants you to listen to him he wants you to say sex me now drink me now drugs me now that's what the devil wants you to do and think this is cool and smart and wisdom in this world he wants you to look like them walk like them talk like them I'm going to tell you sin is a ruin unto itself it'll drag you down if you listen to the devil everything that you hated you'll start to love and think it's all right. I'm going to tell you, God will not let his people be involved in things that are of the devil and things that are of sin. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Walk with God because God's blessings are true and God's blessings are real. And if you'll lean and put your trust on God, he'll give you more than you ever had. He'll bless you with more than you ever thought of. He'll bless you above all exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask and think. You, huh? I found this out when I was young. I was praying God give me a Chevrolet and God wanted to give me a Cadillac. Come on, church, say amen. I was praying that God would give me one thing and God had something better in mind for me. God has something better in mind for you right now. Don't live beneath the privilege of being a blessed child of God. 
God has commanded a blessing on. Look at your hands. Hallelujah. Those are blessed hands. Don't put your hands where they don't belong. Hallelujah. Touch not, taste not, handle not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Let your hands be holy. Put them about holy things. Let your hands be busy doing God's work. Hallelujah. These are hands that God has anointed and called and he said I will command the blessing upon all that thou settest thine hand unto and all that thou settest thine hand unto shall prosper. Right now, give the Lord a good hand clap. Hallelujah. Huh? The devil would like you to die of incurable disease. Ever so often, the devil comes up with something new that he wants to spread. He wants you to catch it. He wants it to be contagion. But you know, God will build a hedge all around you. God will bless you all the way around. The devil can't even get into your house. He's going to have to cross the blood line in order to get inside. Put the door over the, uh, the blood over the doorpost. Why would God want you to be healthy and without sin and prosperous? It's because it's his gift. He wants it to you to have it. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth hath given him the power to eat thereof, to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. Write it down, Ecclesiastes 5, 19. Further, God, Psalm 35, verse 27. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure. Pleasure. Why, you know what pleasure is. That's eating, being able to eat that second piece of chocolate cake. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, church, say amen. And it, uh, pleasure is when you go and try it on the clothes and your waist didn't grow because you've been eating too much. Come on, that's pleasure. Pleasure is putting on a nice garment. Pleasure is dressing up. Pleasure is getting your hair done. Pleasure is getting a new ring. Pleasure is having your family come over and love you. Pleasure is being around friends. Pleasure, you know what pleasure is. Hallelujah. Pleasure is, is driving 160 miles an hour in a, in a Porsche convertible. Hallelujah. Uh, poor, pleasure is driving around in a Mercedes Benz automobile. Hallelujah. When it's 120 outside and you got the air conditioner going. Come on, church, say amen. You know what pleasures are. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. I wish somebody shout amen. Uh, and this is good for today. Though he, listen to this, though he, and that means the wicked, heap up silver as the dust and repair, uh, 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 prepare raiment that has been beautified uh, as the clay. He may prepare uh, it, but the just shall put it on. The innocent shall divide the silver. Job 27, verse 16 and 17. You know, I was out shopping with a friend of mine one day, and uh, he said, oh, let's go into this store here. I hear they make clothes for all the movie stars and celebrities. And I said, yeah, let's go in there. And so he walks in there, and the man looks at him, and he says, you know, I've got clothes already made for you. He said, really? And he stood there, and he started bringing these clothes out and putting them on him. Every one of them fit him to a T. I never saw this one. It was a, a vest that was long sleeve vest, and uh, you, you put the coat over on top of it, and it didn't have any sleeves. I, never, never, I said, who in the world, uh, uh, who, uh, who designed this thing? He said, oh, it was Sammy Davis Jr. designed this. And I said, how did you know it would fit him? He said, they looked like they were the same size. He, and I said, well, nobody can afford clothes made like this. This has got to be thousands of dollars. He said it is, but he never came back and got them. I said, really? I said, all of these suits that you got here? He said, yeah, you give me $40 a piece for them and you can have them. And so, you know, David Davis come walking out of there with five or six suits uh, carrying them in, in bags. I had to help him carry them. I said, you got any, one, any suits in there for Hoss from Bonanza? Hallelujah. <laughs> come on, say amen. You, you got any grown-up people's suits in here? <laughs> 
but he walked out of there and when he, he, he came to me that night and he said look he said they prepared it for him but the just shall put it on and the innocent shall divide the silver he said see they made it for somebody else but I'm enjoying it y'all ain't gonna say no amen here Hallelujah. The devil has been building his kingdom all over this city, but guess who's going to enjoy the millions and millions and millions of dollars they put in here? It's going to be me. It's going to be you. It's going to be us who have been serving and praising God and living for God. We're going to put it on. Let them prepare the clothes. I'm going to wear them. I even wrote a letter to Donald Trump, and I said, hey, you're about my size. You're a little bit taller. I said, I can cut off the pants. Hallelujah. Who knows what's coming my way? You never know what God's going to do. God declared that even though the wicked may save it and the wicked may prepare it, the wicked may, he's never going to enjoy it. I'm telling you right now, God is working this all out. What you've been meaning, uh, the, all these other prophets have been interpreting this as bad. I've been looking at it as something good. Hallelujah. Let them make the money. They ain't never going to enjoy it. They're going to have to turn it over to God's people. Let them, have, let them build the house. They'll never live in it. God's going to make sure that you live in the house. If he has to take it away from someone else to give it to you, God said right here in the Bible, he'll take it away from the sinner and he'll give it to the just, the one who's been living for God and serving God and living for the Lord. God is going to bless you with everything that they've tried. Now, after this, I'm going to tell you, somebody said, Brother Ross, do you have anything else that you can say? Why does God really want you to be rich? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, God wants you to have it. God wants you to have it. God wants you to have it. The wealth of the Lord belongs to God. He opens his hand, it's filled with good. The wealth of this world belongs to God. He put it here for God's people. God didn't put them diamonds over there in South Africa for sinners to wear. God put them there for God's people to wear. God didn't put those diamonds, those blood diamonds uh, there, uh, or, or, or blood rubies, I started to say, those blood rubies, a pigeon blood ruby. You know, that's the one you got to get huh, from India. Uh, and from Pakistan, those are the most expensive rubies. Well, next time you ride over, tell them to send me some rubies, would you? Hallelujah. <laughs> I want one of them blood, pigeon blood rubies. They're so red that when you look at it, it looks like pigeon blood. God, what God put them in the ground for? For those rajas and sheikhs to wear? Those sinners and Christ haters? No, sir. God put that in the earth for you and I to enjoy. God wants you to be blessed by it. Hallelujah. No more zircons for me. Huh? No more phony diamonds for me. No more halfway gold for me. No more eight carat gold for me. I want the real stuff. Hallelujah. I want, the, I want it all. Hallelujah. God said, you'll, uh, hey, I'll give you gold. I'll lay it up for you as gold by the brook, by the stones. I've been to the brook Ophir, by the way, what they call that. And they got, they got rocks in there, stones about this big. You know, I was thinking, wouldn't that be a nice lump of gold? Hallelujah. I don't know how much it weighs, but that's the kind of gold that I want. Hallelujah. They're trying to sell you gold on the Internet right now. Listen, God is going to give you gold. It's going to come to you. Hallelujah. Thou shalt lay up gold, hallelujah, as dust. And the gold of Ophir is the stones by the brook, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. It's a promise of God. Why would God do that for me? Why would God do that for you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'd do anything in the world for my children and my grandchildren. If they asked me anything and it was in my power, I'd work it out to do it. And you would do the same thing for yours. Even if they were mean to you and ignored you and disobeyed you, if they needed bread, you wouldn't give them a snake. Come on, say amen. If they needed something, you wouldn't turn them away. If they needed a place to stay, you wouldn't put them out of your house. I, is anybody listening to me? Maybe you ain't got children like I. Maybe you don't love your children like I do mine. But God loves you because you're his child. You are his heir. You belong to God. He has made you a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That means everything Christ receives, I'm a joint heir of it. I get part of it. Huh? You're the rightful owners of all the wealth of this world. 
world. The devil's crowd was never intended to enjoy the wealth of this world. It was meant for God's people. And now in this day and time, in this last hour, God is going to return the wealth of the world back to his people. You're going to have so much, you're going to have to hire an accountant to figure out how to control the wealth that God's going to give you. God is going to heap it up upon you. He's going to, hallelujah, you say that can never happen. Well, keep on saying that. Keep on saying that and you'll never get it. Hallelujah. What you need to start saying is money's coming to me right now. I don't know where it's coming from, but money is coming right now. God is sending it to me right now. God has been working in ways that I don't even know, in ways that I know not to prosper me and bless me and lift me up and command the blessing on the work of my hands. God is going to bless me with prosperity and riches and wealth. Why is God going to do this? Because I'm his child and he is my father and God doesn't need another reason. You don't have to say amen to that. My God doesn't have any, my father, my heavenly father doesn't need a reason to bless me. Hallelujah. Just send it on down, God. Hallelujah. You know I'm going to do the right thing. I've always done what's right. I've lived right. And doggone it, hallelujah, I deserve the blessings of God. I deserve it because I've done everything God has told me to do. And if God told me to do something and I didn't do it, I don't know what it is. Some of you need to realize we're living for God. Don't let the devil push you down with these little wrist limp sermons preached by these so-called faith preachers who discourage you. They preached on faith till nobody gets a miracle anymore. Shame on them telling you why you didn't get it telling you you didn't have enough faith. You weren't spiritual enough. You weren't close enough to God. You were asking a miss. Huh? I only ask one miss, one thing. Hallelujah. I asked Miss Kay to marry me. Hallelujah. I don't ask a miss. Huh? I, don't, I don't miss what I ask God for. Huh? I, I pray about what I ask God for. I ask God to give me what he wants me to have, and I know my prayer is going to be answered. Come on, say amen. Because God is touched by the feeling of your infirmities. He knows what you're going through. He know, he, I, you know, he never said you wouldn't go through stuff, but you got to throw go through to get what you want from God. Hallelujah. You have to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. You have to cross over Jordan to get on the other side. You have to fight the devil. You have to go through a fiery furnace sometime. You may have to spend the night sleeping with lions in order to come through blessed and prospered and receive what God, but God's going to be right there with you. He never said he's going to turn his back on you. He said, when you walk through the fire, I'll be there. When you go through the flood, I'll be there. The storm is not going to overtake you. You're not going to be destroyed. Nothing that the devil has is going to prosper against you. Why? Not because I'm a super Christian. It's not because I have greater faith than anybody else. God is going to bless you and God is going to prosper you and God is going to heal you because you're his child. Healing is the children's bread, by the way. It already belongs to you. Jehovah Rapha is my God. Hallelujah. I I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that blesseth thee. I am Jehovah Jireh. I can make a way out of no way. I've got a ram in the bush for you right now. I know the devil doesn't want you to hear stuff like this. You'll go away from here. Uh, I've testified to a preacher uh, in California uh, just a couple of days ago. He said, Brother Ross, with Greece failing in their economy and, and the euro uh, uh, about to collapse and fall, and, and uh, he gave me a whole, uh, Wall Street, they uh, don't know what to do, and bankers are, are, are con- and I said, what are you worried about? Governments rise and fall all the time. I mean, has anybody ever read a history book? Huh? I've been to countries where I went to preach and preached there, and now the country isn't even named the same name. <laughs> they overthrew the government, and another one took over. You want to know something, child of God? God, do, God uh, doesn't care about governments. He raises one up, and he puts them down. Is anybody listening to me? And it's not the United nothing that can, nations that can do that. Instead, it's God that does that. 
It's not presidents that create countries and build nations. It's God that has to do that. And if it's not built on the right foundation, it's not going to last. Y'all ain't listening to me. You think all of these uh, nations in the Middle East are strong? They're not. Uh, the most powerful one uh, in all of the Middle East is terrified right now that another group on the same religion is going to take over their government. They're terrified right now. Uh, why is that? Because they don't have the security of God on their side. You know why I know that this nation is never going to fall? I can tell you right now, as long as there's 10 Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled Christians in this country, God is not going to let it go down. I'm one of them, hallelujah, that believes in God and got the Holy Ghost. God is not going to let this country fall because I am one that will not bow down and submit my, my word and submit my heart to anyone else. I'm not bowing down to Baal today. I'm holding on to Jesus and God God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You got to get your priorities correct here. You got to get the power in line. You got to know where the power comes from. The power comes from God and God is going to bless us. Love is the strongest tie in all the world even though the world doesn't want you to believe that now. The world wants you to believe that lust is. But I'm going to tell you, lust will pass quickly. Quickly it'll pass. Love will stand forever. Hate will pass quickly, but love will stand forever. Love is the strongest tie in the world, and God loves me, and God loves you, and God loves his children. God loves us so very much that he sent his only son, his only begotten son, to give us the best. Will he not freely also freely give us all things? Romans 8, 32. God's going to give you everything. And listen to me. He does know what you have need of even before you ask of it. And he's able to give you more than you can ask or think exceedingly abundantly above everything that you believe for God is able to give it to you and open the windows of heaven the devil doesn't want you to preach the gospel I figured that out already right here in our little humble city of Holy Ghost filled not, well I don't know if they're Holy Ghost filled but all of these Christians in this area here they don't want my voice on TV they don't want my voice on radio. Huh? They, huh they, they put me off one radio station, wouldn't let me on because I mentioned the name of uh, C.H. Mason, Church of God and Christ founder, and A.A. A. Allen. They said, what are you mentioning them for? I said, well, on the first program where I come on, I wanted to tell people where I'm coming from. <laughs> I got the Holy Ghost, baptism in C.H. Mason's ministry. I couldn't get it in that white church I was going to. I had to go where the power is falling. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, uh, introduce that one thought in your mind. <laughs> Come on, say amen. <laughs> they, had, <laughs> I, I, they had me in that Pentecostal church my mom was going to. We, they, when you get down there to pray, you had to pray and tarry. They was in there the tarrying business. You had to tarry for a month or two. You had to come down to the altar every service and tarry and wait. You had to wait on God. Wait on the Lord. Ha, na, na, na. They'd all get around you and say it. Uh, here, how do you get the Holy Ghost? Well, here's what you do. You start saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And get on the Jesus train. And, for, and then you switch over uh, when you hold on and turn loose. <laughs> hallelujah. And I got on the hallelujah train for a while. I'm down there at the altar. I'm pounding on the altar. Oh, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you ain't doing it right. I said, well, what do you mean? I'm asking for it. <laughs> well, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they'd all be around me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. After about three months of that, I said, this ain't working. I saw a little ad in the paper that said Bishop Mason was coming to North 11th and H Street in my hometown. And so I went out there, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a great he founder of the Church of God in Christ. <laughs> the church, the whole thing was about big as that platform. <laughs> and, he's up, and, I, and, you know, I was terrified because they, they told me, that, you know, that black folks, that they actually steal little white babies and eat them. 
See, we were very enlightened. <laughs> and we didn't even have a flag. <laughs> That's just what everybody told me. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm there, and I said, oh, God, I didn't know it was, this is across the tracks here on the, on the north side of town. I didn't know it was going to be like this. And here I am walking there after dark, and I'm, <laughs> I'm down there, and I'm looking in the window. And Bishop Mason, who wasn't a big man, I mean, he was just a little fella. He jumped off. I mean, he, he came over that, plat that platform. I mean, there was a rail across there, and he, he jumped right over that thing. And he goes running out the back door, and I said, Oh, God, he's coming after me. He saw me. And he did, too. He came and got me. He came and got me, and he said, Come in here, son. I've been waiting for you. I said, You've been waiting for me. I'm me. <laughs> And he drug me down through the middle of that church and threw me down at, threw me down at the altar. He said, pray, boy. I wasn't even offended. He called me boy. <laughs> I just started praying. I started, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus. You know, you can start praying and, and get your mind on God in a hurry. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they just kept on singing. He's up there, and there were, this is a song service going on. They were just still singing. And uh, I, I said, well, you know, I've, I've done my three minutes of Jesus. I better switch to hallelujah. And uh, so I switched to hallelujah for a while, and I did that three minutes, and I started to get up, and he jumped off that platform again. And this time he grabbed me by the back of the shirt and shoved me down at that altar. He said, I said, pray. Maybe that's what we ought to do on Wednesday night, have a prayer meeting. You'd get tired of it. You come in here and say you're, three seconds of prayers and you'll be up and walking around wanting to get some coffee or something and a donut I'm going to tell you how he made me pray I prayed through the whole service I was afraid <laughs> I, I don't know if it was a Holy Ghost or fear that got a hold of me but something got a hold of me hallelujah <laughs> and I kept on praying until I, I I mean he came down there and he slapped his hand on my head and you know I was sweating too and boy sweat just popped everywhere and Ben Howard grabbed a hold of me, and he, I, I prayed until I got full of the Holy Ghost. I got it right there. Amen. When I stopped praying and started receiving, then all of a sudden God did something for me. He had mercy on me. I got the Holy Ghost baptism, and I'm going to tell you right now, that changed my whole life. It'll change yours too. And God said he would freely give us all things if we believe in him. The devil does not want the gospel preached in all the world. The devil does not want the gospel preached in Roseville. He doesn't want me to preach the gospel in Detroit. He doesn't want me to preach the gospel anywhere. The devil doesn't want you to preach the gospel. That's why he's fighting you so much. He doesn't want you to testify. He doesn't want you to tell anybody about Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. One of the reasons that he wants you to be sick is because you won't feel like going anywhere. Come on, say he wants you to be sick so you'll just sit still. Huh? Sick could be called, translated sit. Hallelujah. When you, say, you sit and you can't get up anymore, you don't feel like it, you don't feel good, don't want to witness, don't want to go tell somebody about the Lord. The devil wants you to be sick. He wants you to be infirm in body. He wants your body not to be strong enough to do this anymore. But you see, God's going to bring you healing from that. He wants to heal you. What's he going to heal you for? To go dance in the honky-tonk or in the disco or whatever, hip-hop club or the jazz club? That's not why God's going to heal you. Come on, say amen. God's going to heal you to preach the gospel. He's going to say, freely you have received, now freely give. Not only that, why is God going to give you a, 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 a spiritual touch? The devil doesn't want you to get spiritual. Somebody said, Brother Ross, sound like you're too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. I said, I ain't never met nobody like that. Got too much heaven on my mind. Heaven is my home, by the way. I said, heaven is my home. This old world is good to me, but heaven is my home. I'm on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. I'm on my way home. 
But you got to understand something, child of God. The devil doesn't want you to be spiritually blessed. He'll send the worst kind of things into your life to drag you down and get your mind off of God. You can get a blessing. Or you can get up happy with your mind stayed on Jesus in the morning and somebody say one thing to you and it'll bring you down off that blessing cloud that you've been walking on. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to be blessed. He doesn't want you to speak in time. He wants you to go to a dead, cold, dried up church where they sing dead songs. Don't want you to even say amen or raise your hand and praise God and think you moving on up when you go to a dead church. Well, they had a miracle here back in 1931. Somebody said they got healed or something, stomach trouble. And I tell you something, that's not what God wants you to do. These people think when they, when they got a little money and they got a, a nice fur hat to wear to church or something and they got a nice dress and they, God blessed them and got them out of that rattle trap and put them in a brand new Chevrolet or a brand new Ford and they go off to these fancy churches and they think, oh, well, now I've finally arrived. God's finally blessed me. Don't settle just for one thing. Don't go to a dead church. I'm, I'm, I'm losing members because I ain't fancy enough. I wish I was more fancy. I wish I could hip-hop my sermon. I wish I could call and chant. I wish I could hoop and holler. Huh? I gave up. I know I can, honey. I did that most of my life. You know when I stopped doing that? I, I stopped doing it one day. Because I was the token white boy in the National Baptist Convention. I'm telling you the truth. I went to Kansas City to their convention, and when I walked in there, they said, oh, are you in the wrong place or something? I said, no, I'm Reverend Pastor Ross Collette from uh, uh, Good Shepherd Church in, in St. Louis, Missouri. You're Ross Collette? You're Ross Collette? Yeah. They just, it went all over. The, everybody's pointing at me. There's Ross, that's Ross Collette. We didn't know that. Oh, I could preach up a storm. I had Cleophas Robinson and Jane Brown coming to my church. I got to out-preach them. Ah! I had all the moves down. <laughs> they said, boy, you should see that guy preach. You should, you should see him preach. That is something to see, something else. Who'd have known? <laughs> that was my, that was my, who'd have known? <laughs> Sister, Sister Baker came to me one day and she looked at me and she said, Brother Ross, sit down here. She's a good mother in my church. She sat down. She said, Brother Ross, did you know, I don't want to alarm you, did you know you're a white man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, you don't have to perform. Well, I stopped performing and people stopped coming. I realized that a lot of people weren't there to, for the gospel. They were just seeing me there to do my stuff. The truth is, child of God, we've got to get on a higher plane here. God doesn't want me to preach the gospel. God does not want you to testify. God, oh, no, I'm talking, the devil doesn't want you to. The devil doesn't want you to prosper. He doesn't want you to have money. The devil is terrified right now. The devil is terrified that you get so close to God. He's terrified that you feel good in your body. And he's terrified that you get enough money to go and do what God tells you to do. The devil is terrified. He's shaking in his true shoes right now. I'm telling you the truth because he knows if you get close to God in the spirit and you start feeling good in your body that, and get, you get enough money, you get enough money to preach the gospel, 
He's terrified that you're going to do it. He does not want the gospel preached. The devil does not want the gospel preached. And you say, why is God going to bless me with money? Why is God going to bless me with spirituality? Why is God going to bless me with good health? It's to do what he said. Fulfill the great commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. At least go across the street and tell your neighbor. The devil doesn't want you to do that. Instead, I promise you right now that we have somebody in heaven right now who hears us and he lives in my heart. The word of God says we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. God knows exactly what you have need of right now. Right now. At this moment, God knows. You say, Brother Ross, God doesn't see me today. God sees you. God knows where you are. God knows exactly what you're going through. God knows when you're encouraged. God knows when you're discouraged. God knows when you have enough money. God knows what the light bill is. Come on out of here, church. God knows how much money it takes to fill up your car. You may not know. But God knows. God knows. God even put that oil in the ground to make gas so you can get around. Come on, say amen. You got to cut out the middle, man. Well, you need a gas well, an oil well. Come on, say amen. You need your own source, and God is your source of supply. God will use the devil to bless you. I wish somebody would say, that's what I read a scripture to you. Huh? He said they'll save the money, but they can't spend it. They're going to have to turn it over to you. Let, let them go ahead and, and buy the stuff, get it all together, and then you're going to move into the house and you're going to enjoy it. I'll give you a house you did not build. I'll give you a well you did not dig. I'll give you vineyards that you did not plant. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your, oil or your wine presses will gush forth, burst forth with new wine. That's what God promised to do you. He wants you to be blessed. He wants to help you. You need to take God as a partner. Wouldn't that be unusual? I'm going to hurry now because I'm almost through. You've only got so much time on this. Let me break right now for a commercial. If you would, if you believe in the prosperity of God, go to my prayer page click on contact us or prayer request or whatever it says there go to the prayer page and fill that out it's a prayer analysis page when you fill that out I'll know exactly what it what you have need of and I'll know how to pray for you and then when you start to return it if you have if you have a, if you don't have a credit card what are you doing on a computer so if you <laughs> get your credit card out and make a donation that's how I, I keep going here is through donations. I told you to start out here. I'm not a millionaire. I just want to live like one. I want my father to have all the money, but I am his heir and I am his son. Somebody say amen. amen. Do that and get in touch with me and ask me for my teaching on prosperity. Actually, it'll change your life. And if I know anybody different who's ever done it, perhaps Velmer Gardner, was the first one that I heard preach on God wanting to bless you with prosperity. But that was back when I was 12 years old. The message started right there in, uh, uh, what was the name of that uh, hotel? In my hometown, up in the banquet hall. That's where God started speaking to me about prosperity. 1964, a message came forth that said in Washington, D.C., right before I was there for A.A. A. Allen and went on over and I was part of the first Poor People's March. A prophecy came forth. The prophet's name was Larry Thornton. He prophesied that God was going to restore the wealth of the world back to his people. I've been sojourning here in the wilderness now for 40 some years, 50 years. But now the prophecy is going to come to pass. Everybody say amen.